Hi there. DCA guy here. That's my book available on Amazon. I'm showing off my 12 volt gold silver electroplater that I made. Uh, it's a wooden box I constructed or something else. It just happened to be the right size. Got armatures here, contacts. These copper springs are made from the cores of television coax. Uh, like a t TV cable. You know, you strip it down, get the core out, and you got just the right thickness of copper to make these contact springs. These two armatures swing away so I can lift my cells out, and I've got six cells in here. These are jars, salt and pepper shakers actually, from the dollar store. Yankee dollar, to be exact. And these were perfect. These are pipe straps. Copper anodized pipe straps the base metal's aluminum on them. I found out as I started sanding them and shaping them a little bit. But these salt and pepper shakers have these wonderful tops that just pop right off. And the carbon rod inside is my cathode. And it came from a battery like this. One of these lantern batteries. This has got four carbon rods in it. You get these four uh, cells out here. This is like one and a half D flashlight batteries. You know, a one and a half size D battery is ba basically what uh, you got inside these lantern batteries, four of them, and you just uh, cut that open like a tin can and the carbon rods inside. And that's your cathode. The anodes, you know, you can buy these gold plated wire connectors from Radio Shack and uh, they're plated in like 24 karat gold or something and that's the perfect uh, anode for building more gold on. Okay, the, now these plastic things right here I slit with a razor blade and then I carefully fed this shaped copper pipe strap through uh, the slit that I made in these right here and I fed it up in there and then I was able to uh, cut holes to screw the cathode up through, you know, and get nice contact there. Now the fact that there's six of these cells means that I can put 12 volts into this and each cell is going to have about two volts and that's uh, acceptable for plating gold or silver. Here's a better look at the insides. Chest latch, hinges, armatures. Swing out of the way so you can get your cells out. You know, messing around with alligator clips was for the birds. See, these are all connected in series so that the voltage between any, you know, on any one cell is just a couple of volts because connecting cells in series divides the voltage. I used two-part epoxy, which is not water-soluble, to glue that in place. That's the cathode. Uh, I drilled a hole in the pipe strap big enough for it to fit through, and I screwed it on through there. Uh, on some of these, I drilled a tiny hole with a tiny drill bit through the carbon rod, and then I fed a wire through it, a peg of solid core wire, uh, to hold it in place before I epoxied the heck out of it. Uh, right there, that's uh, I soldered that contact way up here where it's way out of reach of the solution. That that jar is only a little bit more than halfway full, tiny bit more than halfway full, and I've made sure my con my anode is submerged. Yeah. Now I soldered that anode to that copper wire also. Okay, and I used the two-part epoxy to cover up the solder point because that's junk metal that's going to get in the water and uh, do things. If I, if I don't smother it with two-part epoxy, that's totally non-water soluble. Uh, so as for where you get your solution, you know, that's gold acetate. Uh, you find the right rock. You know, and if you live anywhere in the Northeast, you can find the right rock. You think of gold as something you can find in California. you got to go all the way to the West Coast and do some panning to find gold. Actually, there's a lot of gold mines north of the eastern United States in Ontario. And we've had glaciers bring down all kinds of rock. 
I guess the burning question everybody's going to want to know is, what rock did I get that gold acetate solution out of? And in the neighborhood, <laughs> I'm going to answer this question as best I can, because I no longer have a sample of the rock handy to show you. I would if I did. Um, but as best I can, explain it. In the neighborhood of where I found a lot of pegmatite rocks, similar to this one, I found a mudstone. It was similar to this. Gray mudstone and a white creamy quartz like this were put together, and when I cracked the white quartz part, uh, it was like a cream colored or yellow, like a lemon drop inside. And I pounded up that rock, crushed it up fine, as fine as I could. I soaked that in vinegar, which worked, believe it or not. Uh, white distilled vinegar from the grocery store. And I ordered acetic acid, acetic acid online. Now I read in a lot of places online that vinegar won't dissolve gold minerals. And uh, the funny thing is, when you read tips on how to clean your gold jewelry, they'll tell you you can soak it in vinegar, but take it out before too long, or it's going to damage your gold jewelry. Well, if it can damage your gold jewelry, jewelry I guess it can dissolve gold. And uh, there is such a substance as gold acetate, and you can look that up online. And I suppose how you make gold acetate is you crush gold and uh, you soak it in vinegar, maybe strong stuff from that you order online, but uh, it's about that color. The website I ordered the acetic acid on was a website for ordering chemicals for making your own biodiesel, and I soaked the crushed up rock and the acetic acid in a bucket just like that, a five and a half gallon bucket, and I soaked it for a good couple of weeks. You know, this this process takes a little bit of patience, but it works. Yeah, you can make a one time investment in some solar panels or a wind turbine. The electricity it takes to extract metal this way will be no skin off your back, you know. I've got my electroplater plugged into the massive 12 watt converter of this pop up camper trailer in here. And to make sure I've got this thing working, I just get a, uh, well this is a battery tester, it's actually not even a voltmeter. But I've got convenient access to one of the, the cells, the contacts that is, and I can touch that there. And I watch my meter come up. And I've actually got it set to test a 3, uh, three volt uh, low milliamp battery. And that's what it reads when I go and I hook it up and it reads right on the margin of good versus bad that's the kind of meter it is you know pretty simple but the voltage actually drops when the thing is the liquids are ready to change in all the different cells that's actually going to read only about this far across the meter and it takes uh it's got to sit overnight for it to do that but you're watching you the voltage will drop on it and the reason is because the the voltage in the individual cells is built up to match the voltage being pumped into it and then the net uh you know, the difference is zero. The voltage between the cells are closer to zero than uh, it was to begin with. And that's how, you know, it's it's just like finishing, it's just like charging a car battery. Now, as I go to edit my video together, it occurs to me that, um, you know, these lakes we got here in New York, they got mercury counts in them. And I suspect those mercury counts came from people uh, mining, backyard mining, rare earths or you know, metals, such as gold, maybe tin, copper, uh, you know, don't pollute the environment. I showed you this today, so we can all stop polluting the environment, just to show anybody out there who may uh, already be backyard mining, hey, there's an alternative to using harsh chemicals and uh, cupellating your metals and letting uh, heavy metals just kind of uh, go out in the environment through the air you know, like they do in third world countries. I saw it on Discovery Channel. That's how they mine gold in third world countries where there's no pollution laws whatsoever. And, uh, you know, just don't conduct yourself in a way that uh, justifies the passage and enforcement of nanny state type laws. We don't want that. So be ethical. You know, use electricity and not harsh chemicals if you're backyard mining. And that's why I present this video today. And if this video contains some information that you thought was pretty interesting, that uh, you probably feel that uh, you needed to know and you're glad somebody finally told you, this book contains more. And uh, it's a great work of science fiction. 
I got some good critical review on this book by both uh, conservatives and secular critics. You know, they, they said it was good genre fiction, print worthy. So if you'll check it out, it's available on Amazon. Thanks.